Greetings, everyone. This is Fred Coulter. Welcome to Church at Home. Church at Home is sponsored by the Christian Biblical Church of God, and we are dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today, the truth of God for this sin-filled world. And the greatest sin comes from religion. And that is really quite an amazing thing when you understand it. Because all human beings have some belief about God, whether good or whether not so good, whether hateful and rejecting. But everyone has an opinion about God, and there are even those who say there is no God. And the Bible says, the one who says in his heart that there is no God, he is a fool. And yet, the world looks upon them as the most educated of the evil. So truly, we live in a world that is technologically advanced, but is morally upside down. So upside down, in fact, that good is called evil and evil is called good. And that Men are pushing their own religious beliefs to change the Bible. And this has been done over and over again by many people attempting to change the Word of God. Have you ever heard of the inclusive New Testament or the inclusive Bible? And to satisfy the women's movement and the homosexual communities, they have tried to make everything gender neuter. And one of the most abominable things that they have done is this. They say that the name for God, God the Father, is a metaphor. And a metaphor does not really explain a truth that is to be believed firmly. So because they say that, they took the license to change God the Father to Father slash Mother. And then they say, well, the reader can use his imagination for the rest of it. Now, have you ever heard of such a double-minded approach to the Word of God? Now then, those who keep Sunday like to go to Revelation, the first chapter in verse 10, where John says that in the day of the Lord, I was on the Isle of Patmos, and they changed it that on Sunday... I was on the Isle of Patmos. Isn't that wonderful? We now have Sunday in the Bible. They did the same thing concerning Easter in Acts, the 12th chapter. There's no place where it talks about Easter in the Bible. But men want to pretend that they know more than God and pretend that they can set up something better than what God has done. Likewise, with the homosexual community. They believe that they can still be Christian and practice their sexual preferences. And I began to think about how we can engage this topic as a church in a way that's faithful to scripture and loving to those around us who are different and engage the other in a way that offers them Christian hospitality. However, they're gravely mistaken, but they are so convinced that they are right, that as we have seen, they have undertaken to change the Word of God. Now, let's pick up where we left off last time here, 1 Corinthians 6, verses 9 and 10. So last time we read from the faithful version. So this time we're going to read from the King James Version. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Now, unrighteous includes everyone 
who practices sin as a way of life. And Paul wrote a little later, he said, everyone who names the name of Christ depart from unrighteousness. Continuing with the King James, be not deceived. And guess what? They come right to this verse, and what do they do? They deceive themselves. That's amazing. That's the way human nature is. But you see, the power behind all of this is not just human thought. There is a Satan, the devil, who's the god of this world, who is driving all of these perversions to try and overwhelm and kill all Christianity. And we'll cover that in a little bit. Neither fornicators, those who are sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Then it continues on in verse 10 with the King James, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And we can add to that this nor shall they who are unfaithful to the word of God. God says, Jeremiah 23, the one who has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. Now that's why we have the faithful version. Because in this version, we have corrected all of the inserted mistakes by various translators pushing various agendas from Sunday keeping, Easter keeping, holiday keeping, and abolishing the laws of God. And those who proclaim that all the laws of God are abolished and that Jesus did it are worse than these who want to put out the so-called gay Bible. Now, here's what they say about it and the justification for changing it. Anti-gay interpreters of the Bible believe or effeminate or abusers of themselves with mankind in 1 Corinthians to mean homosexuals. Therefore, homosexuals are on a level of all the other bad people. We don't want to be called bad. Named in the verse who won't inherit the kingdom of God. Some Bible translators explicitly name homosexuals in this list because that's what it means in the Greek. Others choose, like the NIV, perverts. Others, boy prostitutes. Others, self-indulgent and even sissies. Look at what people go to to try and justify this terrible sexual behavior. And really, you need to get our series, Obsessed with Sex. I just care about my music and my sex and what I'm doing. That's it. And I can hardly wait till Friday night comes. Go night clubbing and swinging around, okay? Now, the English word effeminate comes from the Greek word malikos, which means soft. Malikos means an instrument of unnatural lust, effeminate, disgracefully effeminate. That has direct references to men who play the role of a woman in homosexual relations between men and abusers of themselves with mankind has got to be same-sex relations between men. So here's what they did, because the word can also mean soft. Another definition can apply to garments. But if you are egregiously effeminate, how do you dress? Hmm, think about that. Now, how does this get introduced into young children's minds? Cartoon? 
Bugs Bunny, Elmer Fudd. Oh, but that's just fun. Remember, that's how Satan introduces sin. It's fun. Now let's see how they justify this. Can also mean undisciplined, decadent, lazy, easily influenced. Oh, that's stretching it quite a bit. Greeks and first century Romans, these traits were associated with women who were morally weaker than men. Really? Obsessed with beauty and self-indulgences. Women were far from equal with men at the time of the Bible. Enslaved in a matter of misogamy we would find difficult to comprehend today. Perhaps so in some ways. Have you examined the Muslim marriage? Try that on for size. They say, anyone morally weak, passive, easily influenced, vain, anything weak like a woman, so to speak, fits better with the covetous drunkards, adulterers, and the like described in these verses. Whether or not they are effeminate by today's standards has no bearing on it. So, we changed effeminate to morally weak to clarify this verse's meaning. And because abuses of themselves with mankind had to do with male prostitutes at the temple, they changed abusers of themselves with mankind to promiscuous. Amazing stuff, isn't it? Quite amazing. How far men will go. Now, let's conclude with their Queen James Version of the Bible this way. Let's see what they say about it and how they justify it and how they say what a wonderful job we did and we are really helping those in the LGBT community to survive better and get away from discrimination against them. Now, what we didn't change. We didn't change anything else to create this edition of the Queen James Bible. The Queen James Bible resolves any homophobic interpretations of the Bible. Well, maybe you think it does in the Queen James Bible, but it doesn't change the Word of God. It doesn't change the meaning of the original just because they try to make it sound like it's not as bad as it really seems. Well, it really is as bad as it really seems. And you just check out the website that we have mentioned, Dr. Paul Cameron. But the Bible is still filled with inequality and even contradiction that we have not addressed. False statement. There is no inequality, and there are no false statements or contradictions. The Bible does not contradict itself. God is a God of truth. Jesus Christ is the Word of God incarnate. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And there are no contradictions in the Bible. There are apparent contradictions, but there are no contradictions. Continuing, no Bible is perfect, including this one. We wanted to make a book filled with the Word of God that no one could use to incorrectly condemn God's LGBT children, and we succeeded. And so that's the editor's note concerning how they change the Bible. Well, the Word of God stands true. The Word of God is sure. Now, what is the ultimate goal? What do the forces behind same-sex marriage, homosexual behavior, what is the main agenda? The main agenda is to get rid of God. Well, I'm here to tell you God is not going to go away for your convenience. However, Jesus did make a statement back here in Luke, the 18th chapter. And let's see where it's going to be become in our day 
because we know in Revelation 13, it says in the end time, that the whole world is going to worship Satan the devil. They are going to believe that Satan is God, and anyone who stands for the truth of God is going to have to be eliminated from the society. So the first thing they're going to do is take the bullying tactics of trying to shut everyone up who preaches the truth. And the goal is destroy marriage, which they're succeeding in doing, destroy the truth of God, which they are attempting to do but will never succeed in doing, and to rid the earth of Christianity. This is why Jesus said in Luke 18 and verse 8, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find the true faith on the earth. The answer is, it's going to be very, very hard. There will be those who will be keeping the commandments of God. We know because the book of Revelation tells us, and Satan is going to come after them. Verse 17, Revelation 12. Then the dragon was furious with the woman, who is the church, and went to make war with the rest of her seed, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So there will be some faith. There will be those who are faithful. And that's why we have church at home, so you can be faithful beginning in your own home, regardless of what the rest of the world may believe. Now, also, we find it in chapter 14. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Very interesting, isn't it? It takes faith to keep the commandments of God. It takes no faith to sin. Now, let's see what is happening. Let's see why all of a sudden all of these things are coming down the way they are that are related to the homosexual community. Now, this is from a report by Peter LaBarbera. Peter LaBarbera of Americans for Truth About Homosexuality notes that groups such as Not At All Like That, The Truth Wins Out, have campaigns to promote gay Christian. That is such a contradiction in terms that it's unbelievable. They are out to destroy the family, and they want to redefine Christianity to fit the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender agenda. So there are great forces out to do this. Now then, political groups such as the Human Rights Campaign and the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force have been engaged in Christian advocacy for a long time to try and break down the truth of God concerning sexual behavior. And do we not now have homosexual men who have married men who are bishops in churches? Yes, indeed. Do we not have lesbian women who are also ministers, supposedly, of the pulpit? Yes, we do. And one of the things that we're doing together is an exciting event called the Believe Out Loud Power Summit, where we're gathering 300 or so uh, leaders in our tr different traditions to work about expanding the, the gospel of inclusion and radical hospitality and extravagant welcome by learning skills in leadership development and uh, working together on how to use media and we're going to have powerful worship. There is no way that they can ever teach the truth of God because they are all living in sin. They may profess a Christianity, but that's not the truth of God. They may profess that they are law-abiding citizens, but that doesn't mean that they keep the commandments of God. This alternative Christianity movement 
is started by some of the most hateful, secular-minded people, even atheists who live on this planet, and yet they are going to redefine Christianity for us. Now stop right here. The reason that you're so open to attacks in Christianity in the world is because Christianity in this world has redefined it to their denominational standards rather than to the truth of God. And you teach the traditions of men and the ideas of men rather than the truth of God. Oh yes, you use some scripture, but what happens? You follow all the occult holidays, which by the way then, Everyone who listens to church at home, you need to order your complimentary copy of a cold holidays or God's holy days, which, and you need to have your eyes open to the truth. Now, this is not some little emotional pamphlet. This is an in-depth expose of all the occult holidays, which includes Halloween, Christmas, New Year's, Easter, Lent, all of the practices that are called Christian today are, in fact, pagan. Now, if that's a shock to you, then that shows you how far you have been removed from the truth. Now, let's continue here. Pro-homosexual activists have campaigns against religious homophobia and argues the gay Christian message in evangelical circles. La Barbera says that campaign seeks to place an evangelist for the homosexual lobby in each state so they can go to the state houses, their senates, their representatives, and push the homosexual agenda. And guess what their leverage is? If the homosexual lawmakers do not go along with them, they have the power to expose them. How's that for a little honest lobbying? There's lots of money being spent on this and lots of activism, and I'm afraid Christians just have no clue that all of this is going on. Yes, indeed, and it is. So you go to Peter La Barbera and look up his website. Now, I have some other reports here concerning, did you know that you can go online and you can get a list of all, all the gay villages in the world? You can go to these websites and actually find out the depravity of their behavior. Now, this is why, that for children coming up in the world today, that it's possible to educate your children at home and homeschool, just like we have church at home. And these things are there so that you can have a safe haven from the things going on in the world because the world is going to come to the point, as we have covered in Revelation 13, that the whole world is going to worship Satan the devil. And Satan the devil is right now in his campaign. Now, there are people out front. Most people don't know that it is Satan the devil who is doing it, who is trying to do everything that he can to destroy the Word of God, by perverting it, as we have seen with the Queen James Bible, to destroy the true faith, to destroy the family, to destroy marriage, to destroy children and teenagers by getting them involved in sex beginning at a very early age. Now, this is the truth of the matter from the Word of God. So be sure uh, go to our other website, cbcg.org, and be sure to download from Church at Home homepage all the material that we have there for you at no cost. 
and you get the two books. Number one, Occult Holidays or God's Holy Days. Number two, Lord, what should I do? And then in the privacy of your own home, you can prove the truth. You can worship God, and you can do it in truth and in privacy and in the confines of your own home without being bombarded by the false religion of Christianity out in the world today. So once again, thank you for inviting me into your home. So until next time, this is Fred Coulter saying, so long, everyone. Thank you.